Hi, welcome to another episode of The Art of Rope Work here at Canyons and Crags. I'm Rich Carlson. In our pursuit of adventure, we should strive to be self-reliant and efficient. By efficient, I don't mean fast. In fact, if we're not efficient, we have no choice but to move fast to make up for our inefficiency. If we learn how to move efficiently, we can afford to slow down and enjoy more of what the outdoors has to offer. With that in mind, today's topic is twin rope systems. With a bit of practice, a well-organized group can use twin rope systems to dramatically increase their efficiency when descending from a climb or traveling through a technical canyon. So, grab your gear and a rope and follow along. Most people involved in rope work understand double rope systems. A double rope system is one where we have to rig our rappelling device on both strands of rope to be safe. We get to the bottom, we grab one strand, pull on it, and we're able to retrieve our rope. A twin rope system is where two ropes are set up, two ropes are hanging over the wall, and either one of them can be used safely for rappelling. Main reason we use twin rope systems is to move our group more efficiently. Not necessarily having two people rappelling at the same time, we can save time if somebody is rappelling on one rope and someone else is rigging for rappel on the other. As soon as the first person hits the ground, the second person starts their rappel. While they're rappelling, a third person rigs on the new free rope, and so on. Rigging a twin rope does not automatically make our group more efficient. The group itself needs to be organized. Best if everybody is ready to go and in the queue so as soon as somebody gets off, somebody else is ready to rig. Another option we have is allowing each individual to decide how they want to rappel, whether on a single strand or a double. This comes in handy when you have a big range of people in your group, different weights, different skill levels. Lighter people and those who are familiar with their rappelling devices and know how to add friction on the fly may be quite comfortable on a single strand of rope. Some of the beefier guys in your group, or those who are unfamiliar with how to add friction on the fly, might choose to rappel on the two strands. Now let's take a look at a few different ways that we can set up twin ropes. In the early days of my own guiding career, when it first occurred to me to establish twin ropes for descents with clients, I wasn't very sophisticated about it. Initially, I simply tied figure eight knots on either side of the rappel ring and clip those to the anchor. I was able to move my groups more efficiently, but I lost a bit of time untying the knots after the group was down. After a while, I switched to clove hitches because they were easier to untie after they were loaded. A similar system involves tying two opposing butterfly knots in the ropes and clipping the loops together with a carabiner. Each of these systems will work and they can be rigged with knots that you likely already know. Rigging twin ropes also makes it very simple to set up a top rope belay. One rope is used for rappelling and the other for the belay. For this, my preferred method is to tie one butterfly knot using both strands of rope. The loop created by the butterfly knot can be used to run the belay with a munter hitch, for example. The loop also creates a convenient clip-in point for the group leader. If you set up a twin rope system and intend on using bottom belays, you have a communication challenge. It's best for the first person down to separate the ropes to identify which rope is on his left and his right. The communication then becomes on belay left, belays on left, and on belay right, belays on right. I learned the Stein Noten, translated to English as the Stone Knot, during a trip to Europe in 1999 and introduced it to the American canyoneering community over the next few years. Its biggest advantage is it's quick to tie and untying is simple and quick. Just remove the carabiner and it falls apart. So maybe it's more accurately referred to as the Stone Hitch rather than the Stone Knot. 
I learned the stone knot is a variation of a figure eight. People now tie variations based on overhand knots, right side up, upside down, as well as another variation that more closely resembles a marlin spike hitch. Personally, I still prefer the original. Yet another way to rig twin ropes is with something called a stone eight, originally referring to a figure eight repelling device. What I am demonstrating here is the stone totem using the incredibly versatile totem rigging device. It should be obvious that this rigging method relies on the weight of the repeller to pinch the rope up against the device. I consider the stone totem to be more secure than the original figure eight version due to the length of the slotted end of the totem. A stone eight can be rigged as quickly as a stone knot, plus the last person down simply rotates the device, clips it to their harness, and they're ready for rappel. Another simple twin rope system is what I call a clip block. To rig it, all I do is take the clove hitch off the spine of my carabiner and move it out to the wide end, then take the carabiner and clip it up to the anchor. For everyone in the group, except for the last person, the two ropes are now fixed on that clove hitch. The last person needs to remember to take the carabiner off of the anchor and to move the clove hitch onto the spine of the carabiner so it becomes a normal block again. And of course, they need to be smart enough and be paying attention to rappel on the correct side of the rope. All of the systems I've shown so far involve fixing both sides of the rope. Either one of the ropes hanging down the wall is secure for rappelling. The last system we're going to discuss is called a simultaneous rappel, or simul wrap for short. With a simul wrap, the rope is not secured. Two people rappel at the same time, one on each side, and rely on each other for counterweight. One of the common questions that comes up about simul rappels is what if there's a big disparity between the weights of the two people on rappel? That's usually not an issue, especially if there's friction in the system. Friction in the system could be created with this rope passing over some kind of a rock formation instead of just through a rappel ring. We also get friction just where the rope passes over the rock at the edge of the cliff. That friction is quite often enough to compensate for the disparity in the weights. The greatest risk in simul rappels is someone who doesn't fully grasp the concept, failing to understand that he literally has his partner's life in his hands. If he reaches the ground first and does not maintain complete control of the rope, his partner may fall. One simple safety measure to prevent this from happening is to clip one end of a 48 inch sling to the front tie-in point of your harness, not a gear loop, and the other end to the front tie-in point of your partner's harness. With the sling in place, there's no way one person can reach the ground ahead of the other. Another safety measure is to add a static block on one side of the rappel ring. In this case, I'm using a carabiner block. The idea here is for the most competent person to repel on the side that is protected by the block. Why protect the most competent person? Because we trust that person to get to the ground and understand that their weight is providing safety for the other person and they don't come off the rope. If we protect the less competent person and they come off at the bottom, our more competent person is not protected. I hope this video has helped give you a basic understanding of what twin rope systems are and how they're set up. All of the systems covered here are static systems to be used when your primary concern is moving a group efficiently. There are other times when having a releasable contingency should be a greater priority. There are some releasable twin rope systems that I will cover in a future video. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And please feel free to share it on your favorite social media. Thanks for watching.